we're going to do a very fast um, introduction to child development this morning. Um, other housekeeping tours, we're now in um, day two. Um, it's going to be a real sprint again today. The, we keep the pace fast because we know your people who don't have a lot of time got to get smart fast. But today we're going to do a, it's going to be more interactive. A little less lecture, there's going to be more demos. Um, we've got some uh, activities where we break up into groups and brainstorm and so on. So it isn't going to be quite so much sitting. Um, but I want you to know that it's open seating. You can get up, move around. Um, Wi-Fi should be working, hopefully. And uh, so that's that. Um, just another note that any photography or tweeting is optional. Um, if you're up on the podium, you're probably going to be on YouTube. Fred is the guy who's the main valve to YouTube. But talk to him if you don't want, or if you're giving a talk or a demo and you don't want it on, just say it into the microphone. All right? <laughs> That's right. All right? And anything else that, that I'm forgetting to say this morning there, sir? Yeah, I did. You missed that part. So, could you get your handout packets open to child development? section. This document is sort of a mashup taken from over the years and it has a little bit of uh, everything that you'd want to need, need to uh, sound smart in a group with a group of uh, doctoral folk. Um, and you can just memorize a few terms. And So here's like some essen essential PTA buzzwords, all right? Uh, stage theory. Actually, just look at the screen, if you will. Pick out a couple and say it to your neighbor. Just let let the words roll off the tongue. Like equilibration. Let's try that one. Equilibration. Doesn't that feel good? Equilibration. Equilibration. Um, so like when your spouse says, hey, what'd you learn? You can say, oh, I did some equilibration. All right, everyone do the chin. Pick out a word and say it to the person next to you. Go ahead. All right. So I guess we're done with that section, Darren. That was faster than I thought. Can you set the, the talk clock, uh, clock, Scott? Or David, anybody there? Just want to thank everyone for coming to this again. Um, this is such a wonderful collection of people. Yeah. You know, and, and we, this group will change the world, I, definitely. Um, and then just a reminder that we are on a tipping point for it coming off the of InPlay and Sandbox Summit and all the wonderful events this spring. I've never seen so much good discourse in the area of interactive media. And um, it's being fueled by the multi-touch phenomena. So we've got a horse to ride. And we need ideas. Uh, the, the supply and demand pipelines have been cleared out. And so it's a really exciting time to be in this space. And if you make the right decisions, you can make multiple millions of dollars. If you make the wrong decisions, you can wreck your company. So it's really important to um, be smart in this. Anyway, all right, back to this. Um, all right, so another thing that's really important is um, I, I, I have a PhD. <laughs> Isn't that cool? It's the coolest thing in the world to have a PhD. I got my doctorate late in life, so it, it did not sear into my ego. And I realized how little PhDs tend to know, and that there's very little relationship between how smart you are and how much education you have. And if you don't believe me, just visit any education school. Uh, it's in um, my PhD. I got it online. At, uh, no, it's educational psychology. <laughs> it's it's real, okay? Just trust me. All right, I paid a lot. I'm actually kind of still paying for it. But uh, <laughs> anyway, go to Wikipedia and get yourself a PhD. You can get better information faster. Just look up Piaget, right? It's wonderful. It's unbelievable. Three other clicks that will change your life is YouTube EDU. You can get, I think I calculated 300 master's degrees now in terms of content. 
and you can watch a, hu a, a total degree in human development. And also another one is uh, iTunes U. Um, so it's really exciting. You can get smart on this stuff quickly. So who's this guy? This is the first test this morning. All right, that's um, Abraham. Mass law, very good. Nice. All right, so let's start with the basics, okay? The fundamental child. So I have a master's degree, too, <laughs> in human development. And that actually, I actually learned I had all this stuff from working at High School Foundation for 10 years. And that's where I really learned a lot of stuff. Um, so I kind of de-learned stuff in graduate school. But what I learned in graduate school was parking. That's what I really learned. But anyway, um, Maslow's hierarchy is a great thing to throw out to your spouse when you get home. Because if, you, if you're hungry, if you don't have your coffee, or if you don't have a good washing machine, life kind of shuts down. You have to take care of the base because you can't self-actualize or um, become a complete human unless you have your base needs taken care of. And they're all there, and they're physiological needs, and they're also base psychological needs. But if you, you can have the best app in the world, it's not going to work if a kid's hungry or has to go to the bathroom. And so as a teacher, you know, you have to take care of those things. We came up with this metaphor of the child as a tree. And just throwing all this, uh, this theory out, if you think of the, a child as a living organism, I love this metaphor. It's a great way to sort of get smart quickly and think about what children need. The trunk is Maslow, is the hierarchy. It's basically spiritual needs, mental needs, mental challenges, and physical needs. And if you have a strong trunk, the branches can grow. So continuing the metaphor, trees don't grow without fertilizer. They don't grow, and the fertilizer would be materials and interesting stuff. So if you want to raise a happy, healthy child that bears fruit in the form of grows up and leaves the house, is, <laughs> is uh, right, but it doesn't come back. Um, or like, you know, um, it, it's really, there's nothing more delightful than you, you parents know than seeing your child grow up and accomplish things, maybe like winning a major competition is fruit, and, and you're just so proud of that. All right, give it up for him, all right? Give it up for him, all right? Um, but the thing is, like, if you, uh, you want a well-rounded tree, so you want to provide a lot of experiences, screen and off-screen, a lot of concrete experiences, and so on. And, um, of course, the whole thing shuts down without love. And so it, this, this metaphor is great. Um, the branches are very specific leaves. The leaves can be specific skills. If you don't have skills and competencies that can be very um, specific, uh, there's no photosynthesis, the food doesn't get back, and the tree doesn't grow. So it's kind of like a, a wave of success. So that's a great metaphor. All right. Yes? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And but but I would also argue, my friend, colleague, that um, there are a lot of rainy days in life, aren't there? And fire makes the iron uh, stronger. Um, life is hard, and let's just get that out there too. It's not easy being a human and you're going to be faced with challenges. And part of your ability to make it to a successful adult is handling a lot of crisis. Um, but I, there's an article in there where I talk about a young single mom in Hawaii raising a multiracial child by herself. And the odds stacked against her. And this was before the New York Times did the whole thing on Barack Obama's mother. But we all say to our child, someday you'll grow up to be the president. And I really believe in self-fulfilling prophecy. And that's why I'd like you to refer to me as the world's leading expert on children's interactive media. 
in your and handout packet, there's a lot more to read. Listen to this guy. And you can schedule it uh, so that a reward occurs every now and then when a pigeon does something. We usually use a response with a pigeon pecking a little disc a spot in the wall, and you can reinforce with food. But you don't reinforce every time. You're every, that's every tenth time. Or there is a good example of how you can move from uh, a... Uh hey, that dude. <whistles> so we do have... Uh, where's BF? Bar Barbara. You, well, you know, you were the best VF Skinner I've ever heard. We're hoping we can get you to put those glasses on again. And that's, by, of course, uh, where's Renee? Yeah, she is a beautiful, belle, belle, Montessori. So anyway, the, the point is you can be these people if you want. And I want you to internalize those people. So everyone turn to your person next to you and be BF Skinner for a second. And throw in some conditioning stuff. Same thing as what we call schedule. Sure. Same thing as what's what we call schedule to reinforcement. Reinforcement what? Negative calls. The buzzword is schedules of reinforcement and, and um, positive negative reinforcement. All right. Very good. All right. Um, digital M and M's. You can really, and mastery learning is another one. And, and um, actually, Skinner was one of the first geeks. Excuse me? <laughs> All right, so here's Piaget. So did you know that Piaget taught with Alfred Binet for, of the intelligence test? And he actually was grading IQ tests and thinking a lot about competency and skills and how you get to get a high IQ, and um, that he's a he was a biologist, and he started thinking about the organism. So Piaget was an individual person. He thought about the the individual tree, and that's really important. He didn't think about the whole social context of learning as much, and that's why Vygotsky is in in Piaget. It's like Pia, peanut butter and chocolate. They're, they really get along well. I'm really sounding like a, a PhD, aren't I? This is it's, it's good, man. Whew. His brain's here and the words come out of my mouth going, maybe I'll learn something. No, uh, no I guess it's all on Wikipedia. Um, so anyway, um, Piaget's, so it, it's, it is, a, is an organism. Uh, then he studied his own daughters, which is really kind of frightening. And, and um, it, Darren always asked me, so whatever happened to those daughters? Did they ever turn out okay? Um, he was married, three kids, spoke French, um, smoked a pipe. He died in 1980 after a long life. He was born the same year as Lev Vygotsky, uh, 1894. And Marie Montessori could have delivered them because that was the first year she pra was practicing medicine in Italy. So it's kind of to put it all in context. And of course, these people are just in a long lineage of, uh, of theoretical um, uh, a theoretical framework. There's Froebel before Piaget, and they all sort of helped each other. Um, uh, so the, none of this happened in isolation. There isn't like one place. Um, Piaget would say children are active learners. And then moving on up, there's concrete operations. You should know a lot about conservation. If you want to play with a kid's brain, you can do, have a lot of fun at that age. I was flying on an airplane. And the guy told me that if you he had a very active three-year-old boy, um, and he told him that um, if you touch that button that calls the flight attendant, the wings will fall off here. But you really don't touch them. You can do that. It's okay. It's, it's not cruel. Listen, have you parented? You have to do these things to survive. Um, so I, was, I would never do this. So I was teaching with a teacher that said that if the fire alarm button would basically end the world. Kill mommy and daddy. And this is how desperate they were. <laughs> Listen, if you don't value a teacher, all right, if you're like a politician, you cut the education budget, take, tell them to take five preschoolers to McDonald's. And by the time they come back, I swear they'll give every teacher a raise. So, and I was actually a teacher and I taught in a classroom with a center block room with 30 kids, and it really shaped what I did. And the other advice I'd say to you is 
just take tomorrow off, don't come to Duster Magic, go to a school and spend a full day in the grade level that you're, te that you're making a product for. It'll be the best education you ever get, really. And I know that because I was a teacher and I used to go in other teachers' classrooms as part of my training. Um, I had a great principal. He said, you're going to go to these teachers and watch them teach. And you just learn so much about that specific age. So that's great. All right, so that's PHA stage theory. There's other stuff in there that we've collected over the years. And we made this. This is, this is a real quick, um, this is part of my, when I was teaching at ITP. Uh, my name's Warren. I'll be your host today. And uh, here to look for. And when you, when you learn this lens, I, our, and I love Jesse's, uh, Metaphor of a lens. Oh, no, it's my wife. Well, fortunately, I did not. Get it's been a struggle our whole marriage with the footage of children. But but you start to see um, how you see children differently. In quarter, I started using Piaget's uh, stages as a framework, and uh, here's a sensory motor level, uh, ages birth to three. Um, just coming to the shore for the first time, noticing these strange creatures walking by, eyes wide open at the stage, concentrating intently on So that's the slide. She's looking it, at the sunglasses. Sensing it. And that's where the world is. Crunch this is great. Toes and the rest of the world completely doesn't exist. Your head, your mind, your eyes, all your senses are concentrating on that one attribute. You totally forget about the waves, which is another attribute introduced here. Another slide. Which causes you to forget about Whoops. footprints which are We're done with that. in your memory and moves you to other thoughts. In this case, this sensory motor child, a little bit older, got to have your gear when you're at the shore. Operational is the more it's stuff you have, the better it is. The faster you pour something, more. Um, the more you get, the harder you push the button, the, freedom the, the better things are, because they can't conserve. And further explore their environment by touching This is the when they take things literally. If you say to a child, a little bit of disequilibration in here, where when a big your eye, goes I've got the eyes on the back of my head. And they really think you have up. eyes on the back of your head. It's a. It can be a frustrating time um, for a child. And, and this is why they're so crabby. It's also a fun time because you can represent and pretend a pre-operational stage you can exploit your brother who's at a younger level of your <laughs> it was great I had brothers that did this all the time I'll give you a dime for a nickel to get all the cool it's rocks. bigger nickel's worth more right in this case he's thinking hey what happened there oh well I guess and this is a time when you do a lot of repetitive please record your message when you finish recording you may hang up this is formal operation was a, a, a well of course Getting interested in the opposite oh gentleness, and um, you, know, you know, the tools start to become more sophisticated. My daughter's cell phone, such as uh, formal operations, when it's all about relationships. Hello, I'm probably here. I'm just avoiding who I don't like. Leave me a message, and if I don't call you back, it's you. <laughs> At the cell, please record your message. When you Take finish that. recording, you may hang up or. And that is an. I really have enjoyed my daughters watching them develop and grow as human guinea pigs. So if you have children, use them. They have no human subjects you have to worry about. You can research them to death. Um, the, the TED talk on uh, the, uh, the guy who filmed his life. This is Sarah. I showed this at her high school graduation. And developmentally, this makes perfect logical sense. Here's a, here's a concrete operations. Um, and when you tell a child something and you use words, they take it literally. This is Jenna. She's now 15, 16. Oh, what do you like to eat? Yeah, what, what, what? This is Sarah. Can we? The gum attribute. Can I call me an First of all, no. Next question. Please. Why do you want to call? See the brain working? Down and give us some money. Uh, <laughs> no, hon, because you spent all afternoon with Amanda. So 
So you just relax. Mommy's coming home in 10 minutes. We're going to have supper. Okay? So if you set, hope to sell something in 10 minutes, you better go out there and sell as hard as you can. I should never have said that. That was really a bad idea. You'll see. How old are you? So I talked with Jenna a little bit. Killed some time. How old? Oh. Do you know how to use the computer? Yeah. What do you use it for? Um, that little pink. Look at that big ball. She's a better parent what? than me. Look at her. What? Come here, see. I mean, they did, YouTube wasn't even invented then. But I'm going like, wow, that's awesome. <laughs> and Jenna's going, Dad. So the internet, you don't need to worry about the internet. There's a danger when parenting. All right. So Darren, you have one. So Montessori, a very fast crash course in Montessori. Uh, Montessori was a real innovator uh, in terms of technology. She was a geek. She's really excited about x-rays and so on. Um, they weren't called that at the time, but it's fun to parallel some of her activities with software. Get the spirit here. She was a very attractive young lady. She's really smart, too. And in 1913, um, she came to the United States and a sold out crowd, and John Dewey introduced, introduced her at Carnegie Hall. And she stated that her uh, she seeks perfection of the race. Say that with an Italian accent, right? And so, but basically, she was a constructivist. That's the word you want to keep there, a constructivist. And so, would it be great to be in that audience? She was an innovator with the state of the art, I would argue, and there's a lot of controversy as to what she would say use today with the iPad. I think she'd be cautiously ecstatic about the iPad and multi-touch. I punched it at age six, and uh, and I immediately went to a Montessori school. Actually, um, you got guys like this out there using the Montessori words. And studied for a private school at that time. Uh, was significant financial work. Uh, but the public schools, uh, that, as in many parts of the country they do now, have bad reputation. Uh, I do think I benefited from the Montessori uh, education, which. Uh, you know, in some ways, gives the students a lot more freedoms to do things at their own pace uh, to discover. Uh, and interestingly, my uh, partner Larry Page, she also went to Montessori for uh, preschool or kindergarten. Like Larry and uh, Sergey, who can you name four other geeks, famous geeks that went to Montessori? Will Wright. Thank you. Anyone else? David's going to, it's going to be quiet. Um, uh, who, who's the guy that started Amazon? That yeah, he had some Montessori. Anybody else? He did good. Thank you. Very good. Very good. Um, but basically, um, the greatest sign of success for a teacher is yeah, that's a quote. Liner named after her and whatever. She was a, a theoretical rock star. And Vygotsky was a tragic case because he died of tuberculosis at only age 30. But before he, he died, he um, wrote extremely uh, a lot. And the area between online. the level of independent performance and the level of assisted performance is the zone of proximal development. It is here where the teacher must focus attention. It's from Davidson Films. Lev Vygotsky was born about a hundred years ago in 1896 in Tsarist Russia. As Jews, the Vygotsky family, however prosperous, 
were outsiders in Russia under Tsar Nicholas. Limits on how many could be formally educated. The odds were great, but miraculously, Vygotsky gained a place. He also became interested in psychology and began to research in this field. Encouraging children to draw what they are experiencing. So the point is that it's the ZPD, try that out, ZPD, Zone of Proximal Development. Say that to your neighbor. Zone of Proximal Development. And it, explain what it is, what's the ZPD. It's the difference, good, I see the hands going. It's the difference between a master, uh, the, a novice and a master. And another one is more capable other. So if you hang around with a pilot and you go and fly in planes, you'll start to learn to fly. And that's why the tutorial model is so important. But what's important about Vygotsky is he considered the social aspects. And when you look at that beach video, you understand how much children are looking around learning from other kids who might be at a slightly higher or lower developmental level. And they, they learn so much from that. It's such, growing up in that tree process is such a messy kind of thing. But one of the things you want to think about in your interactive experience is, what's the ZPD? Where, what do I want the child to walk away from the experience with that they didn't have when they came to the experience? And if you can't answer that, you need to think about it. Otherwise, it's just kind of entertaining or empty calorie time. All right. Because people say that, um, you know, you're a software reviewer, and, and, uh, but you're such a nice guy, but you gave me like a two-star rating. And I just want you to know that there's a picky teacher that lies in the soul. And, and, and you know, as a reviewer, or as a human, I love you. Uh, but as a picky teacher, I'm very specific, and I look for good pedagogy. And if you're going to be constructivist, make it good. Um, and I hold up a checklist as a reviewer, and I think all reviewers should. It's not the person, it's the uh, rubric, it's the theory, it's the lens, and it has to be the best. And we all have the teachers inside of us, and we all expect your product to treat every child the way you treat your own kids, like Darren's or my daughter's. That's who we're fighting for. So anyway, Child development is a very powerful tool. It's like, as I said yesterday, the laws of gravity. It doesn't change. A child 100 years ago went through the same stages as a child growing up today. Screens or no screens. And in 100 years, it'll be the same. It's not going to change. It's a constant. And so you don't go up to a baby, and you don't expect them to say, here, here, baby, let's run. That would be absurd. But cognitively, that's what a lot of interfaces do to kids. If you can't recognize it, you're going to have some dust, and it's not pretty. So if you can nail it, and I think you've, you've seen some interfaces that nail it, you're, you'll have magic, and that's when it really goes. So it's, it, this is powerful. That's why we do this. This is power. It's about empowering young children, like Claire said, turning that finger into, in their mind, into all kinds of things. That's what you can do. It's, it's, that's why it's, it's cool. All right.